All right, we're talking about the baby and the unspoken hero here in the. She is a hero. So how do you guys do the baby? You're saying you at night and I day. I do the baby at night, and Jared takes the other three kids. So between the seven, four, and two year old, they don't sleep through the night either. Wow. I don't need that much sleep. So, so what, right. what's this one's name? This is Magnolia. Magnolia J. So do you PR with every baby that's born? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's I think so. It's guaranteed, right? Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. That means we need more. Right? One more before the Olympic trials. I don't know if there's enough time. <laughs> it's got a it's got a Boston thing on. Uh, yeah, it's got a pin. <laughs> Yes. So as a spouse, like, how do you watch the race? Like, are you I staying here in the hotel here or? For about an hour and a half before the race starts, technically. <laughs> and then I'll go down to the finish and wait and watch. Erica knows the marathon doesn't start till mile 18, so when I'm leading at mile 13, she's she's like shaking her head. And... Yeah, what'd you think? Did you see the fist pump and? I, I was the, thinking, the... what are you doing? <laughs> Remember, you don't lead the race right now. Lead it at the end if you must. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, what were you thinking at that point? Just having fun? Yeah, it was a blast. I, you know, and frankly, the pace had slowed, and I was looking at the clock thinking, hey, this is the day for a sub-210 that I've, I think I've had coming for a while. And so, uh, when the, you know, I thought, I don't want to run 510s. I want to keep I want to keep the rhythm going, and so I just went for it. But it sure was fun to lead. Like, going through Wellesley in front was a fun experience. How does this result, like, affect your fall? You know, it will affect it. Um, but I'm kind of, you know, I feel very much like I'm in a marathoning high right now. And so, you know, there, there are a lot of fall marathons that I'm excited about entertaining the thought of running. And Coach Eyestone is, is a fan of what worked before coming into the Olympic cycle. And before the last Olympic trials, I didn't run a fall marathon. So, um, so I think there's, you know, we're going to weigh that and say, hey, this worked last time to just run a spring marathon and do some speed, some shorter stuff in the fall. Um, but... But you're never in the same place twice, and so I think the, the fact that the marathon is kind of clicking right now, and I'm excited about it, means that um, at least we'll entertain the idea of, of picking a marathon that would be fun. But we'll just have to see. A lot of it will depend on how my rates feel in two and three weeks from now, too. How would you? How do you rate today? Good. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know that I felt like I was firing on all cylinders perfectly, and it was a hard last four or five miles, but I kept looking at the clock and hitting my splits and saying, hey, I'm staying sub five, and, and I knew that I could break, you know, I knew I could run 209, and, and that kind of kept me going at the end, and so, um, I don't know, I, I give it, I give it at least an A minus, and, and maybe on paper I should give it better than that, but um, training had gone really well, and so I, I, was, I was certainly excited about this race. And so, the weather sort of was... You know, they're saying it was going to be terrible. Then they were. Are you constantly sort of adjusting what pace you think you can run? Or yeah, yeah, going into it or watching the weather, like even this morning, and and trying to gauge. But ultimately, it comes down to feel. And and it was about you know four miles into this race, I started thinking it's hot out here, and I, and it's not going to be a wicked fast day given the humidity and when we creep into the 60s and the sun peeks through and um, and we could feel that heat and I could tell the other guys were feeling it because everyone's grabbing water and dumping it on their heads and um, so yeah that's all playing into it but but the reality is that the training had gone so well that I wanted to give myself a chance to to finish in the top three or to be in the race at the end and um, and so I you know I kept running the pace that I felt like I was ready for to give myself a chance and and when the training goes well, I, you know, I hate to not be in the race. And so, yeah, you were right there till probably till like the 23 hills. miles, yeah, 20, 20, yeah. Oh, 21. Yeah, 20. I would say in the hills there was a little separation, and, and I knew that I could. I'm a pretty good downhill runner, but um, but there was separation, and there's a pack of 10 guys that are all really good guys. And so, uh, at, at that point, I was running to get into the top 10 and check that standard and you know, try to run this up 210. And that's got to be a huge relief, the yeah, standard. Yeah, it kind of feels like a monkey off my back, for sure. Yeah, because I was talking um, to your agent. He's, we realize the trials, cause there could be just, you know, six guys eligible to go to the Olympics, or eight or something. And it could be. Unless and they it, change you know, it. And we'll, yeah, we'll, just, we'll see what, how USATF decides to, to select a team, but, but it certainly is a good feeling to have the standard. And I think top three, do you think some of the African guys were more conservative after last year? Yeah. I yeah. feel like, yeah, last year's race time, you know what it was? 
right? And they might have gone more and blown up you. Well, well and we had a lot of good, we had a lot of really good tactical racers in there, and so I think, you know, th these guys are racers, and uh, they were racing. All right, well, great job. Yeah, thanks, man. You can get some sleep now. Okay, we'll do it. Thank you. Thank you.